Here's a great tool to use to talk to your athletes about their performance post open, or quite frankly, anytime an athlete has the question of, hey coach, what do I do to get better? The 2024 CrossFit Open is over, making now an awesome time to talk to our athletes about what things that they can be doing over the next training year to improve their performance. And while we're not concerned necessarily about performance, as in the sport side of CrossFit, we are concerned about the athlete showing general improvement over the course of time. When a retest workout in the open pops up, we wanna be able to see that athlete has improved because of all these things that we're gonna talk about today. So the purpose here is to provide you coaches with a framework to address athletes either deficiencies, strengths and weaknesses, or just kind of a framework for how to improve over the upcoming training year. Hopefully this diagram looks pretty familiar to you all. If you have an L1, you should have seen this before, the theoretical hierarchy of the development athlete. This pyramid provides kind of that ground up framework so that we can get the athlete from A to B as quickly as possible. We can kind of think for the purpose of this conversation with the open being sport. Okay. In broader context, we think about sport as regularly learning and playing new sports. But again, for this conversation, we'll use the open. And what we need to realize is that all of this, all of our performance hinges on that base of the pyramid, which is our nutrition. For a lot of athletes, this is what needs to happen first. You have no doubt athletes who come to you and ask, hey, what is a weightlifting program I can do to get stronger? What is a, what's a gymnastics program I can do to get my first muscle up? None of those conversations should be had until we have addressed the athlete's nutrition. You simply can't exercise away a bad diet. Our metabolic conditioning, our gymnastics, and even weightlifting hinges so significantly on the fuel that athletes are putting into their body that this has to be the starting point. Okay, high points on that is making sure using that kind of CrossFit prescription, 40, 30, 30, 40% 40 of our calories from carbohydrates, 30 from fat and protein is a great starting point. Some athletes will need to be adjusted from by their coach or uh, you know, a nutrition, nutrition expert, whatever, um, but this is an excellent starting point. And regardless, basically, our metabolic conditioning and our gymnastics especially really hinge on our intake levels, making sure that it's not so much that we are uh, in excess calorically. Once we've kind of had that nutrition conversation, then we can start talking about kind of these, the middle of this, uh, this pyramid here. And ultimately, open performance and our daily workouts consist of these three things, our metabolic conditioning elements, our gymnastics elements, and our weightlifting elements. Once we complete, kind of have our nutrition dialed in, the next most important thing is absolutely our metabolic conditioning, okay? We don't necessarily care that an athlete can deadlift a house if they can't run a mile without stopping. Our metabolic conditioning is the next most important thing. And let's say you have the athlete who really struggled with the conditioning workout in the open. CrossFit does a really good job of making sure that all of these elements get addressed over the course of these three workouts. And there's typically a workout where the only thing you need to do is keep moving and kind of test your engine. For a lot of athletes, this is where we get stuck. And what we can do here is think about one, is the athlete scaling things appropriately? We know that intensity is kind of our, our guiding light towards improved fitness. And one of the ways that we make sure athletes are getting appropriate intensity is that they are scaling workouts appropriately. Maybe you have the athlete who likes to use that RX weight barbell, regardless of whether they blow past the class time cap or not, because they can do it. That's a conversation we need to educate the athlete on, on why a coach might suggest a lighter barbell or a lower skill gymnastics movement because we want to improve our, uh, our metabolic conditioning and our energy systems. And we can't have that conversation again without addressing that nutrition. That is what is the fuel for our gas tank. And this is ultimately our driver in performance for all of our other CrossFit style workouts. After that, we go up to our gymnastics, kind of the next level of uh, the pyramid here, the next thing that we talk about with the athlete. Gymnastics, ultimately, body weight movements, are a strength to body weight ratio kind of equation. Again, this is a conversation where we have to start with, how's your nutrition? You have an athlete who maybe uh, gets stuck on the rings. They're staring at the rings. The end of the workout <clears throat> has those 20 ring muscle ups and the athlete just simply can't get themselves over the rings. Odds are that's because either their metabolic conditioning does not afford them the fitness to be able to get themselves over the rings, or more often, the athlete is simply too heavy 
body weight wise to be able to get their chin over the bar, their body over the rings, their toes up to the pull up bar, being able to lock out that handstand push up. So if our gymnastics movement, movements, workout, whatever was the limiting factor for our athletes, let's start the conversation with our nutrition, making sure the athlete is actually at the appropriate, you know, body weight, body, uh, lean body mass to body weight ratio. And then we can start from there talking about developing our strict strength. Maybe the athlete got their first ring muscle up and that's awesome, but they didn't have more than one. Okay. We can go back. Once we've talked about nutrition, we can dial in that strict pulling, pressing strength, body weight strength that's so important before we even get to weightlifting and throwing. Once we get past our gymnastics, maybe you have an athlete who is that Metcon warrior, absolute crazy energy systems really dialed in there with our conditioning, but that heavy barbell uh, just really, really puts them in a hole. They either can't lift it or maybe more significant, more likely their mechanics consistency aren't there yet. They have the ability to lift that weight one time, but all of a sudden when their heart rate's elevated uh, and they're out of breath, that weight no longer becomes liftable because their mechanics and their consistency aren't there. So we talk to athletes about making sure that they are able to get into the position. So things like mobility, range of motion is really important here, but then also just making sure that on those weightlifting days or when we pull a barbell out, the athlete's focusing on lifting correctly, not just lifting the most weight they possibly can. Conversely, there are days where we do need the athlete to come in and lift as heavy as possible. Deadlift, back squat, cleans, all of those sorts of movements really allow us to kind of tax that nervous system from a molecular level, and we need that athlete to not skip those heavy days. Typically, the athlete who really likes to see that cardio heavy day is much less likely to come in when the whiteboard says, five sets of five back squat. And that's exactly where we wanna put the eggs in the basket for that specific athlete. So this hierarchy here is an excellent framework to talk to your athletes about ways that they can be improving, kind of addressing maybe the other 23 hours of the day when we're talking about nutrition, making sure they are getting the correct food, sleep, hydration, and whatnot. And then once that's dialed in, we can go a little bit more specific into our conditioning, gymnastics, and weightlifting movements to really help the athlete move the needle. And again, the goal here isn't necessarily to qualify for the CrossFit Games, but we want to see the athlete moving up the leaderboard because because that's reflective of their fitness and therefore their health. Here's a great tool to use to talk to your athletes about their performance post open, or quite frankly, anytime an athlete has the question of, hey coach, what do I do to get better?